Today's scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 6 through 13. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is great. For the testimony of God is this, that he has testified concerning his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe, God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son, and the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and that this life is his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Our next hymn is going to be hymn 14. Hymn number 14, It Is Well With My Soul.
469, revive us again. Would you please rise? first Sunday back with Miss Randy back at the piano and it's just a treat to have her back and have the Clarks back with us and and it's so good to hear the piano be but last week we were watching and I was sitting there thinking that sounds like the piano so I sent Julie a text and I said I said is that the piano I'm hearing and she said with an exclamation point Randy's back <laughs> so we we're very excited to hear that so since Josh did his Geico for y'all last week, I got nine minutes to time. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so I figured, Josh, since you ended 20 minutes early, I get an extra 20 minutes today, so I've got 50 minutes to preach. So I gotta make up for the lost time. 
Okay. He's, he's grinning, going, mm-hmm, and in the background, he's like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers chapter 6, verses 23 through 27. I want to go here because I want to share with you something that God says through Moses to the children of Israel as the Heavenly Father. And as we look at this, we want you to see the love of God, the love of the Father. And then we're going to build off of that as we look and, and, and really try to find what dads are supposed to do. And I, the, the title of the sermon this morning is Commitment, Confidence, and Character. Now, originally, when I came up with the title and, and, and typed it out, I was thinking, this needs to describe a dad. But as I started reading and studying, and as the Lord started opening my heart, this is what he taught me. These are the things that dads are supposed to instill in us. These are not descriptions of a father. And they should be. Don't get me wrong. But what the Lord has really impressed upon me this morning is that through our dads, dads are supposed to give us commitment, make us be people of commitment. Dads are to be the ones to make us people of confidence. Dads should be ones that help build our characters. Now, mom, these are for you, too. This sermon goes for both ways uh, with parents. And, and but I'm focusing primarily on the dads this morning. And it's so important, dads. You have an important role. Listen to this. Before we even get into this, I, I was reading some figures and some um, uh, uh, research. Listen to this. Uh, of course, in our world today, we see that, that for the most part, in a great number of places, dads have just gone AWOL. They've left their families, they've left their homes, they've left their children. They've deserted their positions as head of the household. A fatherless generation, according to research, a fatherless genera generation leads to an increase in gang activity because you have children that are seeking affirmation, protection, and attention that they did not get from dad. There is an increase in a fatherless generation. There is an increase in the alternate lifestyle because there is no root for a male in a, in a male model on how to live as a godly man to affirm their masculinity. Children are more likely to be convicted of a felony, commit suicide, suffer mental illness, drop out of high school, or even become a drug addict in fatherless homes. Research has also shown that children whose grandfathers and even great-grandfathers were men, uh, were, were good fathers, were good moral men all the way around, are more likely to succeed than children in fatherless homes. And all this is research that's been done around the world. So, so dads, we have a big impact. We have, like I said, not only a big impact on our families, but ultimately on our communities. And the research is there uh, to, to show uh, of, of uh, families growing up without dads versus families that do have dads. And there's a lot more research out there that we can look at and do. But those little figures I thought were really important to bring out today. So in Numbers chapter 6, beginning in verse 23, let me show you what the Heavenly Father says through Moses. And I ask you to stand, please, in, in the, the uh, respect of the reading, reverence of the reading of the Word of God. And let's actually start in verse 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Let's pray again. Lord God, the word is so clear. You spoke to Aaron. You spoke to his sons. You spoke directly to the priesthood of the day, and you told them, as the heavenly father, as the father of the children of Israel, as the father of the New Testament church today, this is what you are going to do as our father. 
Here is how you are going to be committed. Here is how you're going to prove your confidence. Here's how we're going to see your character. And Father, through your leadership, through your blessings, through your watch care over us, you are showing us, Lord, as a church, as believers and Christians, that we too can be people of commitment, people of confidence, people of character. And this is the desire that you have for us. So, Father, right now I ask, Lord, that as we celebrate the fathers, as we celebrate the heavenly father, as we look uh, uh, to the guidance of dad, Father, that this morning you will speak by leaps and bounds. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our holy Savior. Amen. And amen. Thank you. you may be seated. So Aaron is the high priest, and his sons are with him. And, and, and it's important, just to know, it may not seem like much, but Moses says, or God says to Moses, tell this to Aaron and his sons. He didn't say, just say this to Aaron as the high priest, but he wanted all of them to know. He said, tell this to the father and his sons who will be working with him. And he goes on to describe how he's going to bless Israel. He goes on to describe what he is going to do for the nation of Israel. He says, this is the way that I'm going to bless them. He says in verse 24, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to keep you. I'm going to hold you close to me and I'm going to make every provision for you. He says, I am going to make my face to shine upon you. He says, I am going to lift you up. Uh, my countenance, my very presence is going to be upon you and I shall bless you always. That's how much the Father loves us. And in that, these few scriptures, we can see a pattern and we can see a, a formula, if you will, of as dads what we should do, how we can make our children feel our presence, how we can make our children uh, be covered by our countenance and, and see that our faces shine upon them. God is acting to Israel just like a dad would to his children. And so dads, these are the things that I truly believe that the Lord is calling for us to do. So let's go ahead and talk about these things. First of all, a father's love, because this is what we're seeing in Numbers chapter 6. We are seeing God's love for his children. So, well, the first thing that we can say is a father's love is felt in his prayers. Father's love is felt in his prayers. Men and ladies alike. One of the best and first things we should do for our kids is pray for them. We need to keep them before the Lord. God speaks to Aaron, and he says that, that he's going to bless. He's gonna, Aaron was the high priest. It was his job to pray over the children of Israel. And dads, just like Aaron prayed over his son, uh, sons, just like Aaron prayed over the nation of Israel, we should pray over our children. The Bible is crystal clear on the importance of blessing our children. The Bible is crystal clear over the importance of praying over our children, dedicating our children to the Lord, dedicating our families to the Lord, making sure that we're praying for their well-being, making sure that we're praying for their mental health, their physical health, their emotional health, making sure that we're praying for their future families to come and, and, and their, their future employment. It's not too early to pray for these things because you want to raise, I want to raise children that are dependent upon God because that's the best place that we can be in. To be in a place where we can uh, be dependent upon God, to let God be in charge of everything, and to say, God, I trust you. As a dad, as a mom, as a parent, one of the feel is when you hear your children from the bottom of the heart say, I've learned how to trust God. That, of course, coming after, I'm ready to be saved. That will be the greatest fear. But when your children say, I've learned how to trust God. And I'm going to follow God. And I'm going to lean on Him. That is exciting. That is the answer of prayer. And we have to cover our children with prayers of, of growing, with prayers of, of protection, with prayers of provision. We have to pray, 
pray, pray over our children. In the Old Testament, it's called blessings. These are some of the verses I'd like for you to look at later on. Genesis chapter 21, 27, chapter 48, chapter 49, Deuteronomy chapter 33. The blessing or the prayers of the father over the children were a very big deal in the Old Testament. In, in Genesis chapter 27, you'll find where Isaiah, Isaac, excuse me, blessed his children. He prayed over Jacob and Esau. He blessed them. He prayed over them. He committed them to the Lord. He, 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 he dedicated his son's lives to the Lord God Almighty. In Genesis chapter 48 you'll find where Jacob in turn he blesses his uh, he blesses the two sons of Joseph Ephraim and Manasseh he turns around to his grandchildren and he blesses them he prays over them he asks the God, uh, God uh, of, of, of Israel to do everything he can to take care of Manasseh and Ephraim. In Genesis chapter 49, you will see where later, um, um, that, that Jacob later blesses his own sons. And he prays over them. And over Reuben and Issachar and, 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 and Bubba and Junior and all the others I can't think of the names of. <laughs> he blesses them. And he watches over them and he asks God to take care of his sons and their families, and their tribes, and their descendants. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Here we see as we're coming closer to the end of Moses' life, and one of the last things he does as the leader of the nation of Israel is that he prays over every tribe. And he bestows his blessing and the blessing of God upon each tribe that they will thrive under the guidance of God Almighty. It was a very big deal. And we don't hear a lot of that today. We don't hear a lot of, of, of fathers blessing their children. Of fathers praying over their children. In devout Jewish homes on the Sabbath, we do have that still going on where dads will pray over their children and pray over their grandchildren. And, and, and they believe that, 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 that God has, that their prayers that, that they'll be able to transfer uh, 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 God's favor, their children into God's favor through their prayers. And it's still a wide practice in devout Jewish uh, homes. But it doesn't need to be a Jewish thing. It should be a father thing. Dads, we are called to pray over our kids. We're called to bless our kids. We're called to, to bring them to the Lord. We're called to, to ask God to find their faith. We're, ask, we're, we're called to ask God to, to protect our kids, to make our kids the best that they can be. We are called dads to pray over our kids that they learn how to trust the Lord. So dads, the love that you have for your children is felt in your prayers for them. Second thing that the Bible teaches that I believe is very important is that a father's love is felt in the touch of his hand. Father's love is felt in the touch of his hands. In the Jewish tradition, going back even as far as what we were reading about here in Numbers, fathers placed their hands on the heads of their children when they prayed over them. Fathers would place their hands on their children's heads. They would place their hands on their children's shoulders when they prayed over them. They would take their hands and, and, and they believed that this was a way to transfer the blessing. Not only as they prayed over them and blessed them, but and, and we do that a lot when we ordain. Or when we pray for someone and we lay hands upon them. We touch them. We put our hands upon them because it's a symbol of, of transferring our prayers, transferring our blessing. And, and, and it's, it's a symbol of, of just completely placing the person in the hands and the care of the Father. But you know, in our day and time, it's very unmanly for dads to show emotion. It's very unmanly for, for a, a, a dad to, to, uh, to show any kind of physical contact. That's just not the social, social norm. 
If you go back into the old Jewish customs, you'll see that the right hand, it was always called the right hand of blessing or the right hand of fellowship. The right hand was always considered to be the hand of cleanliness. Even today we shake with the right hand because that's the hand of, 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 of a blessing. The right hand is used for eating and the purity and cleansing uh, in the Old Testament, in the Jewish culture. Um, uh, and if you were ever touched with the left hand, that was contempt. Somebody didn't like you. So be careful if anybody ever tries to reach out with their left hand. Something will. When a priest was anointed, it was his right hand, his right ear, his right thumb, and his right great toe to cover him from head to toe on the right side. That it was anointed. So the laying of hands has always been important in the culture. And it was instituted by God. But today, culture is different. And like I said, you don't see men. Guys, there is nothing wrong with hugging your kids. Guys, there is nothing wrong with putting your hand around your son or your daughter. There is nothing wrong with affirming them with um, um, the, uh, the touch of the Father and, 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 and just letting them know that you're there, letting them know that you care about them, letting them know that you're there important to you. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, the laying of hands is very significant. In fact, it's one of the six foundational principles of Christ's teaching. He says that it's important for the laying of hands, for repentance, for faith, for baptism, teaching of the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. A simple hug, a simple touch, uh, 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 that, that arm around the shoulder. Dads, it's okay to show your kids your approval with touch. It's just that simple. It is a good way. There's nothing unmanly about it. There's nothing wrong with it. You can come up and, 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 and just let your kid do I love you. Man, I'm proud of you. Give them that pat on the back. You've done good. When the kids feel the affirmation of our touch, when the kids feel the affirmation of our hugs, when the kids feel the affirmation of, of our, our, our kiss to the top of their head or, or on their forehead, it reinforces our kids. It really reinforces their, uh, it helps them to esteem themselves. It helps to build up their self-confidence. Because look, let me tell you something. Anybody can say anything. Anybody can use any word to say I'm proud of. But when you show it, it means a lot. When you show it, the kids, your children get proud. When you show it, it really solidifies the words that you're saying. So guys, the touch of the Father, the touch of your hand, the affirmation that you give to your children is very, very important. Let me share a couple of the scripture with you that I, that I want you to, to see about how God affirms us. Okay, I don't have this one on there. I missed this one. In Deuteronomy 33, 27. I forgot to put this one on. Deuteronomy 33, 27. An arm on the shoulder or just an embrace like that. Listen to what the Bible says. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He holds us. He hugs us. Our Father wraps his arms around us to give us security and to help us feel safe. Psalm chapter 139, verse 5, a pat on the back. Something to steady us, a steadying hand. God, you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Hedged means you steadied me. When I have wavered, when I have felt unsure about myself, David said, I have felt your hand to hold me steady. My heavenly father, David says, has placed his hand upon me to help me stand my ground and to steady myself when I am in the storms of turmoil. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, just that whisper in the ear, just that little word of encouragement up close and personal. Isaiah says, God says, your ears shall hear a word behind you and you will say, are saying, this is the way, walk in. God giving that little bit of affirmation, that 
little whisper, that little close touch. Psalm chapter 127, verses 2 and 3. Uh, uh, the psalmist says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. In other words, the picture here is of a father tucking their child in. He says, it's vain for me to get up and get going and to do my day and just go to bed and never include the Lord because the Lord blesses me. We see the Lord, the Father, wants to tuck me in. And then the last scripture that I want to show you here is Psalm chapter 1 and 3. That kiss on the cheek. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who hear him. Now, this is not the picture of, oh, I'm pitying you. But how many times, picture this with you. You go up to dad, or mom, but you go up to dad, and you're, you've got your shoulders shrugging, your heads down, and you just share some, something really bad. Something that's bothering you, something that has stressed you out, something that you just don't feel good about. And, and what do we do? We put that arm around them, and we just go, I'm so sorry. That is a kiss of affirmation. And the psalmist David says, God does that for us. So if God can hug us, if God can put his hand to steady us, if God can give us that little whisper, if God can tuck us in at night, if God can give us that little cheek of saying, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Dad, why can't you? Because the Heavenly Father does it for us and he sets the example. Guys, Children feel our love through our touch. And it's important for us to give that manly, fatherly affirmation, physical affirmation that our kids need. The last thing that I want to share with you this morning is this. The father's love is felt by the words or in the words that he uses. Again, words can just be said, but words are also very powerful. Words can build a person up. Words can... Cut a person down. So God, uh, guys, we need to be very careful about the words that we use. Words spoken over someone are not just sounds. They are actually the power to change their lives. Through one word, we can affirm our children. We can approve our children. Through one word, we can commend our children. We can compliment our children. Through one word, we can speak love and affection and support of faith. Uh, with one word, we can speak good things over and into our children. With one word, we can speak of our expectations. We can affirm their dreams. With one word, we can give parental assistance in fulfilling our, their dreams. In one word, we can shoot our kids. In one word, we can make our kids rebel against us. In one word, we could say, make our kids say, I wish I wasn't your child. I wish I wasn't part of this family. In one word, if we're not careful, we could even lead our children to say, I wish I was never born. Our words are very powerful, dads, moms. And our words need to be the words that our children... Now, I'm not saying use only words that make your kids feel like life is a bed of roses, because it's not. It's an imperfect world. You need to have words of discipline, and you need to have words of concern, and you need to have words of helping mold your children to, to learn right and wrong, but there is a loving way that all of it can be done. There is a loving way to always esteem and to affirm and to lift your children up. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 11 says, By the blessing of the upright, uh, the city is exalted, but he is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. By the blessed, by the ones who speak the words of God, by the ones who speak words built upon love from one another, a city is built. A, a, a relationship is built. A family is on good foundation. But anyone that is, speaks words of wickedness, anyone who speaks words just to tear people down, the city is lost. The foundation crumbles. The family just falls apart. We need to speak with wisdom, fathers. We need to speak with love, fathers. And the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of love, is the fear 
of the Lord. According to this morning's scripture, words have the power to bless, and his word gives us permission to bless. God says, here's what I'm going to do. His words that we read here in Numbers 26, uh, number 6, 23 through 27, God's word says, here's what I'm going to do for my people. And what does he say? He says, Moses, share these words with Aaron. And the word that Moses is supposed to share with Aaron, Moses says, Aaron, share these with the people. It's important for us to, to learn from God how to esteem verbally. And then when we learn, we are to pass those on. We, are, we have the power to bless, and there is permission to pass on that blessing. And there is permission to be a blessing to others. And dads, that's what we are called to do. We need to be men of prayer. We need to be men of affection. And we need to be men of affirmation with our words. And so when we hear these things that the Bible teaches, and we consider these words, let's go back to what I started with. Can you see why the research says that people get into these other problems and get into these other lifestyles and get into so much trouble because there is no affirmation at home. There is no esteeming at home. There is no loving at home. There's no one praying over them. There's a huge void in so many children's lives because the parents, fathers and mothers, are not being parents to the kids. And that's what drives them into the ways of the world. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, says that what we learn, we need to teach and pass on to our children. And God says, and I will bless your children, your children's children, and generations to come, if we will be godly parents. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you now. We thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to read your word. We thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to hear. And Father, as, as we say so often, may we not be just hearers of the word, but may we be doers of the word. Father, Lord, this morning I pray not only for the dads, but I pray for the moms. I pray for the heads of household. Father, your children can never be too old for you to be that mom or to be that dad. Your grandchildren, you can never be too old to be that grandparent that is so perfectly laid out in your word. Father, I pray, Lord, that this morning will be the morning that, that men especially for Father's Day, but that all parents will just truly commit to being parents of, of prayer, parents of affirmation, parents of, uh, of, 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 of uh, verbal use that just esteems and teaches our kids. Father God, that we will study within ourselves, that we will look at ourselves, find our faults, bring them before you, and ask you, Lord, to correct them so that we can be the best parent that we can to our children and our grandchildren. Father, you are the best father. You are perfect, so we have everything to learn from you. You will never teach us anything that's wrong. You will never teach us anything that is, is, is controversial. You will always teach us the truth. All we have to do is believe, trust, and know. Now every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And I'm going to ask Ms. Rain to go ahead and, and start playing our hymn of invitation. Fathers, but this is addressed to all parents. Fathers, are you truly being the person that God's called you to be as a father? Ladies, are you truly being the one that God called you to be, to be a mother? This morning, I want to invite you to dedicate or rededicate your life to being that dad, that granddad, that mom, that grandma. I want to invite you this morning to say, Lord, I want to follow the biblical example, the biblical guidelines that are there, and I'm going to study your word to find out how to be the best that my children need me to be. 
I want to invite you to make that commitment today. I want to invite you to turn your heart to the Lord. If you're here today and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to give your heart to him. I want to invite you to come and say, God, I'm missing out on so much because I, I don't know you and I want you as my father. And I want to love you and I want to give you my own. The altar is open. I'm here this morning. Listen to the call of the Holy Spirit. And please do whatever he is asking of you today. God is so good, and I praise him that he's our Heavenly Father. I praise him that he is the one in control of all things, and I just praise him that we have this time, that we have this, this family in Christ that we have together, and I just thank him for all of our families, all of our dads again, moms alike. Thank you all so much for everything that y'all do, and not only for your families, but for the community and for this church. Uh, it's just a blessing, a blessing to know y'all. And again, happy Father's Day, dads. Hope that y'all just have a great day today and that you are pampered and taken care of. Yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of moms laughing out there this morning with that one. But it's just great to have y'all. Hope that you um, have a great week this week. Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow, like I said, information is going out on the Facebook uh, about uh, Bible school. Uh, there'll be a Bible study going out on Thursday. And, uh, of course, next Sunday, again, 1030 here, uh, the kids will have a Zoom uh, video meeting lesson this evening at 4 o'clock if you're able to do that, and we hope that you can. But thank you all so much for being here today. And, again, I thank Josh for taking care of everything last week. And I didn't make my nine minutes, but that's all right. <laughs> we'll call it there. Thank you all so much. Hey, look, let's, let's stand and we'll dismiss in prayer. And this morning as we dismiss in prayer, I'm going to ask... Jonathan, if you wouldn't mind the voice of prayer, please, sir.